we are learning that the former president has now given his very first interview since surviving this attempt on his life to Selena Zito of the Washington Examiner. She just spoke with Trump and she was at this event just feet away. Selena, thank you very much for joining us. We're really glad and grateful that you're OK. Uh, tell us about this interview. What did the former president tell you tonight? Well, it's really interesting. I was just a few feet away from him, w along with my daughter, who is a photojournalist. And uh, he he was aware of that because I was supposed to go to uh, fly to Bedminster with him after the rally to uh, to do an interview with him. And and so he called me this morning and uh, or this afternoon and said, and wanted to know if myself and my daughter were okay. So that's that's how the conversation started. Uh, and then I asked him if I could um, interview him, just talk to him uh, uh, about those moments and about uh, how this changed him. And and that's when he said, well, I, I was going to do a speech that was going to be a real humdinger. I think that's were his exact words. Uh, but, you know, uh, everything changed in that moment. Hey there, my name is Devori Darkins. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're gonna be responding to this developing story from Axios about how the Democrats are actually accepting, keyword, accepting, that it's more likely that Donald Trump will be the next president and they're going to stick with uh, Joe Biden. And this is getting crazy as the days go on. Uh, stories keep coming up. But I want to dive into this actual clip because she was the first person to actually interview uh, President Trump. And let's dive in, see what she has to say. And before we do that, you guys already know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Play the video. And Abby, you have covered his his events before. When you when you watch him at a, a rally, he always looks forward. Always looks forward. He never looks to his right or to his left. And he he had put a, a screen up that, of, that showed a chart. Also, never does charts. And he looked to his right, something he never does. And and as he looked to his right, the um the, the bullet grazed right past his face. And I was standing right there when it happened. And he said in yeah. that moment, he understood that everything had changed for the country and for himself. OK, so let's actually check out what she is referring to about the uh, him turning his head. OK, uh, so as you guys can see, I think this said this shows uh, just how close it really was. Right. So he turns his head and the bullet just zips right on by. Uh, so there is that. That is exactly what she was referring to. Let's go ahead and listen to what else she has to say. What is the speech going to be about now? Um, I imagine that the RNC was supposed to be uh, both a celebratory event, but also a, a time to make the case against his opponent. What, is, what did he tell you he's right. going to focus on now? He said he was going to talk, focus on bringing the country back together. He thought that it was very, very important that in that moment, when that happened to him, he understood this is what he was, he, what he wants to do, what he's supposed to do. Uh, and, and he talked uh, a lot about when he stood up and there's that sort of iconic moment when he puts his fist up. And, and he told me that he really wanted to project to people. He said it wasn't about him at that moment. He wanted to project to those people. And he says he loves these people. And, and they are the back, but this is a Rust Belt uh, area. This is a blue collar, white, um, working class, m mostly crowd. And he, he wanted to project to the, he thought it was important to project to the country in that moment that everything was okay that he was okay and the country was okay. And I thought that was, I thought that was really uh, fascinating. And, and he was in a very good mood. Uh, he was, he sounded incredibly upbeat. Uh, these moments have a way of changing people. Uh, just one centimeter of, uh, a difference and, and we would not, we would have him be talking about a much, much different story today. Yeah, so let's go back to the, uh, this whole, you know, he was projecting strength and, and he wanted to really make his, the, 
the people that was at the rally feel like everything was okay. And it's such a deep contrast between him and Joe Biden, and especially if I don't know if you guys saw that clip, but the original uh, response uh, just was not of any confidence. It looked like Joe Biden had just woke up. Um, as a matter of fact, we'll actually play a clip for you right now. Thanks for coming, folks. I've been thoroughly briefed by all the agencies in the federal government as to the situation based on what we know now. I have tried to get a hold of Donald. Uh, he's with his doctors. Uh, they Apparently, he's doing well. I plan on talking to them shortly, I hope, when I get back to the uh, telephone. Oh. Look, so far, it appears he's doing well, number one. Number two, that they're thoroughly investigating what happened to anyone else in the audience. I have We have some reports, but not final reports. And every agency in the federal government, I'll be, and I'm going back to, to my phone to speak with the federal agencies that are being put together again to give me an updated briefing. Has anything happened? They learned any more in the last couple hours. So thank you very much, and I hope I get to speak to them tonight, and I'll get to back to you if I do. Okay? Mr. President, do you think this was an assassination attempt? I don't know enough. To, I, I, have, I, have an, I have an opinion, but I don't have any facts. So I want to make sure we have all the facts before I make some comment, any more comments. Thank you. Are you worried for his own safety? Was the security failing as president? So as you guys could see, there's a huge difference, right? There's a big, big contrast, which leads to our developing story tonight, uh, where senior Democrats are warning, they're warning and saying that they have resigned themselves to the possibility of a second Trump presidency. This is a uh, uh, d developing story from Axios, and we'll actually take a deeper look at this, uh, why it matters. Okay. Uh, it matters because democratic lawmakers say their immediate focus is on their personal security and that of their staffs and not on the party's political woes, helping to allow a crucial cool down period for the embattled president. Uh, and they're saying this is because, um, you know, originally they were trying to call for president Biden to step down. Okay. They put that on, on the back seat right now. It's, it's on the back burner. And they are now focused on security when they should have been focused on that the entire time. Anyways, uh, here's the other thing. Uh, state of play. Biden was engaged in a high stakes outreach campaign at Capitol Hill in the hours leading up to the shooting at Trump's rally, which left a bystander in the shooter dead as part of an effort to stop the flow of statements urging him to end his reelection uh, bid. Biden met Saturday afternoon with Congressional Progressive Caucus and the center left new Democrat coalition. Now. What's the bottom line to all this? He meets up with them. They all come to the conclusion, hey, we're going to take a back seat on this. But also, also, there was a couple of statements um, that came out of that meeting. Um, and here is where it is. What we're hearing. A second senior House Democrat told Axios that the Trump shooting has taken some of the heat off because it would be bad form to make any statements against President Biden. So what does this really mean? Right. What does this what does this really mean? Well, this is what it means. But the second senior House Democrat offered one reason for why it might not actually be a good thing. And that is this. We've all resigned ourselves to a second Trump presidency, uh, end quote. Right. And so as you guys can see, listen, let's not forget what's really going on here. OK, there is a disastrous debate performance by the president of the United States, and he has yet to display excellent, uh, you know, confidence in his ability to communicate effectively. He is yet to truly show up projecting strength and confidence as the president of the United States. He hasn't done it. Now, he's done press conferences. He's done a couple of interviews. He's done rallies, but he's yet to truly show that. And when you are being compared to Donald Trump, especially after this, uh, the Democrats are smart. They're going to want to stop talking about it and bringing attention to the debate and Biden's per performance and should he continue. I mean, it's just not a good look all around, right? So that's where we're at right now. And then going into tomorrow, you have the RNC uh, where Donald Trump will probably obviously deliver an amazing speech. Um, and it has been changed according to what she was saying. But here's the thing that we all need to take away from this story and, and what, what's really going on 
is that things like this happen for a reason. God has a way of touching people and truly creating impact, not at the logical level, but in someone's heart, right? And so I really do believe uh, that he is alive because God wants him to truly do his work for our country. Now, you may not agree. You may not like him. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. But one thing is for sure that I'm sure we both could agree on. You go take a look, right, at Joe Biden's press conferences since the shooting, and you tell me who's much more confident, who's much more stronger, who has a better image, President Biden or President Trump? That's my mindset. So what's yours? Let me know what you think about this developing story. Do you think they're going to still try to get Biden out of there? Or do you think they're just going to leave it alone and just accept defeat from this point on, knowing that this is such a dramatic impact to the country? Let me know your answers and more in the comment section below. And I want to thank you guys for checking out this video today, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>